Aha! This is Laborte, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. First, I apply Word Bearers Red with a dry brush. My brush is wet though, so I can apply paint faster this way than using a regular brush. I leave only the extreme shadows black between some folds. You don't have to be precise at this phase because we will tidy up our work later anyway. Then I glaze over the extreme shadows to smooth out the transition between the black and the word barrel's red layer. My paint is diluted and I pull the paint from the dark to the bright parts with my brush. Same motion every time or it will look like a bit messy and uneven. Also, it's very important to wait for your layers to dry or your layers won't be smooth. With a mix of Mephiston and Vazdaka Red, I sketch out the highlights on the clock. You may ask, but Papa Laborts, how do you know where the highlights are going to be on this beautiful Bastian that lady? And the short answer is, I don't know. That's why I take pictures of the mini when I prime them with black so I can see where the highlights go. It's just that easy. Where the black primer reflects the light the most, those will be our brightest highlights and since we are painting a surface that looks like velvet, we can go pretty high contrast with it. So use a base layer consistency while sketching out the highlights and glaze over it to make it smooth like Granny's butt cheek. Try to follow the folds with your highlight placement. This is a crucial part when painting the rope. If you sketch these highlights poorly and start to increase the contrast, it will never look right no matter how much you glaze it. If you look at it and something feels off a bit, then it probably needs some correction. Take a photo of your mini and if you like what you see, then move on with your progress, but be honest with yourself. And in the long run, you will become a much better painter. If that is your goal, of course. Glaze over this layer to increase the smoothness and try not to lose our shadows with too much glazing. I did 3 to 4 layers and I was happy with the result, so I went on to the next section. Now we add some sunny skin tone to the mix and start picking out the top section of our folds. The torso is where we put most of our brightest highlights to create a focal point around the face. It is crucial to have a focal point on our miniature. If you highlight every fold on her dress with the same intensity, then it will look boring just as you did not highlight it at all. So to avoid that and a big slap on your tiny hand, increase the contrast more towards her torso and shoulders. Add a bit more sunny skin tone to our mixture and continue the process by gradually decreasing the highlight areas. As you see, I'm using thin layers, so they blend in on their own, but if you want to have a smoother finish, just glaze over them. Try to follow the shape of the folds with your brush strokes and try not to hit the crevices with this color because we will lose our shadows. Then I glaze over our new layer and thanks to the hellish weather condition that we call uh, summer in Europe, you can see how the glaze almost evaporates in an instant. And I go back and apply more layers to achieve this nice smooth finish. Now to make the list of paints at the right side of the screen even more ridiculously long, we add some ivory to our mixture. I use some stippling to gently apply our brightest highlights and make Papa Laborte's life a bit easier when it comes to blending. 
You can see I only put these highlights on the top of the folds and mostly on the torso. I also apply it on the folds that are on the ground and facing up because those will catch more light than the ones on her legs. Lastly, I glaze over those parts for maximum smoothness. Now let's check our highlight placement again. See? It's pretty believable that light would hit those velvet folds in real life too, okay? Okay, take pictures when your mini is primed and hold it under a lamp. I mean hold it under a lamp while you take pictures of it. There is no point holding it under a lamp after you took the pictures, okay? Okay. I used Bane Blade Brown for the fur parts. I think it's a quite fitting color for the darker parts and it covers nicely on these rough textures. Use base layer consistency and do not miss out any fur part. Or I will slap on your tiny hand. Then I mixed some Flayed One Flesh to the Bane Blade Brown and painted the top part of these fur bindings. Do you know guys how I knew where to put the highlights? That's right, I look at the crappy photos I took. This texture is super rough, so you don't need to blend this layer, because the rougher the texture, the seamless the transition between highlights. Well, if you increase the highlight values incrementally, but if you go pure white, then uh, yeah, that will be noticeable. You see, I'm using a super crappy brush to apply these uh, highlights. It's a Citadel uh, layer brush. I only have two of these and uh, those are the worst brushes that I ever had and I had like a pack of those uh, Chinese ones <laughs> that they advertise as uh, sable brushes why we all know it's little Chinese children here. Anyway, maybe it was just uh, bad luck of the draw but I would highly recommend not to buy these layer brushes. The dry brushes are cool, love those, but these ones, no. Anyway, I'm using this brush because I apply paint a bit roughly and there is very little moisture in the brush and I don't want to ruin the tip of my Kolinsky brushes. It's almost like dry brushing, but uh, not really. I guess uh, this is called overbrushing. Not sure, but a little bit of uh, moisture and basically you dry brush this layer. Okay, now with pure flayed one flesh, we continue the process, but our highlights areas are smaller and smaller. I think it looks alright, so we are heading in the right direction with our paint job. Papa Labor didn't have any doubts. Just saying. For the last highlight, I used Ivory. Really small sections and I do not apply this on the lower parts of the miniature to enhance our focal point. Our nice velvet dress is done for now, so we can move on to the skin. This lady is a zombie, so I started with Blood River Flesh to create a dark base tone for her skin. Be careful around the dress, we don't want to stain that. After that I painted the eyes with ice yellow, no iris this time because uh, she's an undead queen with a bow and I think it's much more disturbing with these lifeless eyes and looking at the fact that she is using a bow as a weapon. It's much more scary that she can't see, but will shoot you without a problem anyway. Now I mixed some downstone to the Blood River Flesh to increase the dead values of her skin. And I think that was the moment I fell in love with this mini. Not because of the enormous undead boobs, but uh, because Papa Laborts loves miniatures with a theme like this. Something rotten folded up in a nice and elegant dress. That kind of contrast is just so cool to me. Anyway, I applied the paint in thin layers, so I saved myself some time with extra glazing. With pure downstone, I increased the contrast and decreased the highlight areas. If you watched my previous tutorials, I usually do the highlights if the light is coming from the left. But this miniature pose is so symmetrical, I tried to apply the highlights the same way to add an extra layer to that concept. Focus your highlights on the cheeks, forehead, chin, 
breasts and the forearms. This section had to stand out to create the focal point around the head. Glazing time! How exciting! Smooth out our layer with two or three coats of glaze, then you are good to go. Let's add some nurgling green to our dance stone to increase the light values of the skin. Gradually decrease the highlight areas and use thin layers. If you use these thin layers, you will have some room for error. If you paint over some dark shadows or some parts you didn't want to put this paint on, it won't be very visible. If you use thick coats, then it will be visible and you have to redo those parts. Now continue the process with pure nurgling green. This paint is great for painting that skin. The more and more green we add, the less and the less healthier it will look. You can start working on the highlights around the cheek and put more effort into the section right under the eyes. Do not highlight the neck anymore because the light would be blocked by her face. Let's add some ice yellow to the nurkling green to increase the contrast even more and add more luminosity to the skin. You see, I only highlight the top part of the forearm and some of the knuckles. Tiny bit of the undead boobs and uh, put more on the face. This mini is like 50-55 mm so we can introduce more color to the skin and make it more interesting because we have a tiny bit bigger surface. Also, pick out the lower lips with this color so it will have a nice glossy effect. Lastly, I add some thin layer of ivory right under the eyes for maximum contrast. Be very gentle, like when you kiss granny on the mouth. You don't want to spill ivory all over her face. Alrighty, Papa Laborts realized that uh, she had a hood over her head, so I painted it exactly the same way we did the robes. Same colors and everything, so no Mickey Mouse hair. Okay, now it's time for her jewelry. Not gonna lie guys, this won't be an easy ride, so take a break and hug your grandma, even if she is alive or you just keep her uh, mummificated body in your bed. Whichever you choose, we start with Baylor Brown and the base layer consistency. Oh, before that, it's highly advisable that you cover the jewelry with black, because then we don't have to do black lining later and prepare yourself that you're gonna make some mistakes. Unless you are Engel Giraldes or Jose Da Vinci, then it's a joyride, but the chances are pretty high that those guys don't watch Papa Laborts. So do not get frustrated and watch your paint consistency. If it's too runny, I'll slap on your tiny hand. When you do the necklace, try to only paint the frame on the part with the jewel. It will have some nice definition when we paint the gem inside of it. So trust Papa Laborts. Okay, now we apply some Zamesi Desert to increase the yellow in our gold. These are pretty small little things, so just try to make a gradient with the same direction, especially on the necklace. Do her crown too, and depending how well sculpted your crown is, put some effort into it. Shape your brush to have a nice tip and have a good brush for this, uh, something uh, Kolinsky. Hobby brushes are not gonna help you here like those uh, Citadel and Army Painter ones. Those are low quality brushes, no matter how they are advertised, you need Kolensky brushes for this type of work. <music> Lastly, we add some tiny dots of ice yellow and the gold part of the jewelry is done. If you blacklined it, then you will have some nice definition. Now for the gems. I cover them with Hydra Turquoise, leaving a tiny bit of black between the gem and the gold. So this way it looks much more defined and high contrast. I prefer this look, but uh, you can cover it all the way if you want.
After that, cover the lower part of the games with Baharot Blue. On the large game, uh, on her left hand, you can just put a circle shape on the lower part that would enhance the shape of the game nicely. <music> Lastly, I put a small dot on the upper section of the games with Ivory. On the large game, you can put two or even a curved line so it would sell the shiny game effect with a glint. So that's it for the gems. If you handle them well, please send the results to Papa Labors through Instagram or uh, Facebook, like uh, this gentleman does with his work. I would love to see them. The next section is the hair and the metal parts. I used ashing gray for the base layer. On the blaze around her head, I only painted half of the surface. This is a cool style I'm experimenting with. You only put effort on one side of the NMM and then just edge highlight the other half and it creates that uh, dark steel look. On the hair only pick out some locks, but uh, moderately, because we want black hair, not grey. Oh, and we also paint the dress under her uh, dress. Okay. Okay. Then I use downstone to sketch out the highlight parts. I'm also blending in this phase, as well as using some layers of glazing. Focusing on one side of the blade, except for the middle section. If we look at uh, our highlight reference, I use the same approach as for the dress, but obviously I need to create extra highlight sections for the NMM, otherwise it won't look like metal. Now you must be thinking, Papa Laborts, you are painting an MM, but where is Administratum Grey? There it is, my child. So I gradually decrease the highlight areas and blending in the same step like we did before. Try to complement the rough parts of the blades with your highlight placements. My last highlight is Ivory on the blades and on the arrow. I also do the edge highlights with this color to make it crispy like Granny's pick crackings. You need base layer consistency for that and use the side of your brushes tip. Lastly, I glaze some of the Mephiston Vazdaka red mixture we used before to add some reddish hue to the blades that are closer to the dress. So it looks like that this uh, metal color reflecting some of the dress's color. I cover the leather straps and cover with Blood River Flash. Later I changed my mind about the leather straps and uh, painted them with uh, Rhinox Hide. Whichever you prefer, don't forget to paint them. For the bone bow, I used Bane Blade Brown. As you see, I used the same browns and greys all over the mini, so I will have a more harmonic feel to it. I also covered the top section of the cure with this color. Try to apply it in thin layers on the bow, so you can have nice shadows for the bottom section. Try to leave some separation between the bones, so the bow will have some nice definition as well. Then I add some flayed one flesh to the Bane Blade Brown and paint the top part of the bow with that color and the top part of the cure as well. For the lower part I use Bane Blade Brown and creating some dots and spots and tiny scratches to make the cure more interesting with some texture. The last highlight on the bow is pure flayed one flesh. Pick out some narrow and tiny sections on the top of the bow. Don't spill it over the recesses because you have to blackline those parts again to achieve a nice definitive look. Also, I will slap on your tiny hand. After that, Papa Laborts realized that he forgot to do the hair, so with the same colors like we did the NMM, we highlighted gently 
and with moderate amount of highlight placement so the hair stays black and not grey. If you painted the hair grey, that's alright. I just need your email address and I will send you a nice email with an attachment of a slap on your tiny hand. I glaze some diluted violet ink on the darker parts of the skin. This is a gentle detail but it will enhance the shadows definition nicely and make the skin more sick looking. You know because uh, American people say like yo that's so sick my dude. But what they are actually referring to something that looks cool. But uh, this is a zombie so it's uh, okay that her skin looks a bit sick as well. Okay? Okay. Also do that on the shadowy parts on the cloak. Guys, that's Empress Iteria done and ready to kill all of your heroes in the game. Have fun painting her, it's truly a great mini. Papa Labors really enjoyed painting her and I hope you like the results. And if you do, please leave a comment. Thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my Patreons who support these kind of videos, with a special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Dominic Reitman and trying to paint Merez. If you want to support Papa Laborts, you can find the link to Patreon in the video description. You can have early access to these videos and you can vote on the next mini. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt cheek. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.